Launching the MFT software without the tool connected to the computer will result in the error shown here. To close out this window, hit OK. To resolve the error, close down the MFT software, plug the MFT tool into your computer, and then relaunch the software. As you can see here, the software will then launch without the error because now the computer has found the MFT tool. To start the interrogation of the devices on the loop, select the Loop menu option. Next, select the Restore Loop option. This will close any isolator bases or isolator modules on the loop and prepare the tool for communication to your devices and modules on the loop as shown in the ReadyCom window. After selecting the Restore Loop option, the Devices with Status window will open. This is your Communications window. In this screenshot, we are seeing the short addresses of the detectors on the loop. If you want to see the modules, select the Transponders button, and you can switch to the Module view, which will display the short addresses for the modules that the MFT tool is currently communicating with on the loop. In this view, we've selected the Transponders button from the Devices with Status window. What you're seeing here are the short addresses of the modules that are connected to our loop communicating with the MFT tool. It is important to note to wait for all of your loop devices to populate on this screen. You can use the cues below the window of the short address all of your devices should display in the ReadyCom queue. The total detectors and the total modules should equal the total amount of devices on your loop. Do not close out of this screen until all of your devices and modules have populated on this ReadyCom screen. Once all the detectors and modules have come online in the ReadyCom screen, you can simply cancel out of this window and proceed with the mapping analysis. Next, select Mapping Analysis. The Mapping Analysis window will open. Click on the Selection option in the toolbar. Once in the Mapping Analysis, you can bring up the option to either include modules or detectors only. To include modules, simply select that option here. For our demonstration, we will choose to include modules. To begin the interrogation, after you've made your selections, click the Start button. Once the map analysis has been started, you can see here that the detector count, the module count, and the total count match the device counts that we initially saw in the ReadyCom screen prior to starting the analysis. As you can see below, you're seeing all of the devices interrogated by the tool, starting with the short address, the device address, the serial number of the device, the model of the device, the firmware version of the device, and the type of device that it is. In this second phase of the interrogation, you can see that the tool now is interrogating each device on the loop three times and looking for a consistent response back from the device each time the tool is polling the device. As you can see in this example here, we are polling the first few detectors on the loop and based on the hexadecimal tables below you can see that these devices have all sent back the same response each time the tool polled the detector. Here, you can see that the MFT tool is listing the devices it sees as end of lines. This section is useful in determining if we have a device or module that could potentially report as a false end of line which would lead to map faults on the loop. You can use this section to investigate each of these devices in the list 
and verify if it is physically an end-aligned device. Next, we will begin the contact analysis of each device and module on the loop. Again, in the contact analysis table, the SA represents the short address, the DA represents the device address, the Q and the V are hexadecimal values of the device's current draw before and after the device's map flag is pulled, and the difference is the last column. The difference is the difference in the value of the map flag before and after. This value needs to be higher than a 7. Modules and SIGA SDs will always have a negative differential value regardless of how the data in and out is wired. Regular smoke detectors, we look for a plus value in the diff column. Should a smoke detector post a negative diff value, simply take the head down from the base and reverse the data in and out negative wires on the base. When you interrogate the loop after making those changes, you will then see that device or that detector post a positive value in the diff column. Again, it's not necessary to change the data in and out on a SIGA SD duct detector or a module because these types of devices will always show a negative diff value. At the bottom of the report, once the interrogation has completed, you can see in our example here that we have a WTM module showing as an inconsistent device. In troubleshooting map faults on your loops, start with this section first. Resolve and investigate any device shown as inconsistent before moving on. Once you investigate these devices, run the tool on the loop again to make sure the inconsistent device section is clear. To close the report, click the close button. You will be prompted to save the report. Select yes. The save as window will open. We recommend making the file name the name of your site so you can easily keep track of all of your reports for future reference. As you can see here in our example, we've renamed our file LabStation1. Once you have named the file, select the Save button. If you attempt to save a report in the MFT folder, you may see this error. You can select yes to simply save the report in your My Documents folder. After the report has been saved, you will return to the MFT software window. Here you can simply select the red X to close out of the software, or you may choose to reinterrogate your loop again. To exit the software, click the Close button.